I've got a mouse in my steering wheel. Um, right, what else we got here? Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome back to Make, Repair, Recycle and Part 2 of the DIY Sim Wheel Build. And hiding beneath this disgusting fetid tea towel is the mechanical framework for the Sim Wheel. Ta da! Um, that fanfare was pants, wasn't it? Been, I don't know how long since I put the last video together on the electrical build, electronic build, electrical build. And we now have a framework. We have the wheel, we have bits that turn, and all kinds of good mechanical stuff, which, uh, thanks to the power of video editing, you should be able to now see me in one corner or the other of the screen, um, giggling like a schoolgirl, because it worked. Whoa, it's a bit... Well, it's working. The first build of this didn't have bearings in, it was very uh, um, cheaply put together. It's still cheaply put together, this doesn't cost a lot. And it worked. It, it, it took a little while to work and connect to project cars and deep joy while getting carried away and being excited about having something that was working and you turned it and the wheel connected and playing on project cars, uh, the battery and my camera run out. So there's only a few minutes of that. So I've waited to put this short part two together to explain the mechanical build which I shall do now. So last time uh, I just had the electronics together which is I think that little corner over there, the little wires together, the wires worked when I turned the rotor actuator the uh, EMC development software saw it and it all worked which meant electronically I could make it work. The next challenge was to make something mechanical that turns that rotary input from your steering into the encoder, into the computer, with some form of feedback. Now, I'm using parts I had laying around. So the motor came from uh, a kid's electric push scooter, 100 watts, 12 volt, not entirely sure what stalling torque it's got, but it works. It's not a, it's not a snapping your wrist amount of feedback, um, but it does work. It does hold you in corners. It does count the steer. Um, the chain and sprocket I'm using came with the scooter. This is not I'm quite sure if you can hear that. It's not the quietest of mechanisms. Um, and during the test, I didn't have this uh, tensioner pulley on there. Tensioner bearing. So this was flapping around in the breeze, which meant as the motor was trying to counter steer against me, it was taking up the slack before movement, which was interesting. Well, it's working. Um, so it needed something on there to hold it tight, so I had to wait for the bearings to come. I still, there's one on the top at the moment. I still might put one, um, lean that in a bit. I still might put one underneath because it's not quite tight both sides, but, it works. Aluminium 19 millimeter shaft or three quarters of an inch connected to some bearings. I sized these as 20 mil bearings because they were what I could find and they weren't hugely expensive. So using an old trick, the difference between the 19 millimeter shaft and the 20 millimeter bearings is taken up with electrical tape, which actually works quite well. It's quite a snug fit. I've also done the same in the steering hub here, which I'll get to in a minute. So Motor, chain, bearings, this wonderful sort of hub connected sprocket adapter thing using some leftover inch MDF from something else I must have made at some point um, with a screw in it. And in the shaft, there is a hole that the screw balls into. The only thing I've found from using this from uh, 10, 20 minutes at a time is somehow this screw starts to work loose. I think I want to get something more meaty in here and more permanent to carry on with the chain for now. At the back, this rear plate, I can turn this without breaking all of the electronics. So we've got the rotor actuator mounted on a little plate, which is very, very thin. I think it's one of the cover plates you get with, um, on a computer, on the old uh, tower ports, you get cover plates. Um, that is connected 
using the coupler that came with it to the shaft. In the end of the shaft is a 6mm bolt that I've cut the end off and epoxied into the hole because this isn't solid round bar, it's actually a tube um, with a 6mm quarter inch hole down the middle of it. So it's actually quite solid and sturdy. So uh, it's aligned as, as well as it could be, bearing in mind everything's been made by hand and equipment, which is not, mm, you know, I can be reasonably accurate, but it's not CNC machining. And the purpose of this is really, it's a test bed, it's a mule, it's a prototype to get things working. And at the moment, it works. Um, the, as I say, the feedback, the settings I've managed to wind the EMC software up to 100 um, on the force feedback and in the game, in, so I've only tried it with Project Cars to turn that up to 100. And it's not wild. Um, you can feel it though, if you do hit a wall it does kick back reasonably hard. And the interesting thing with this is in the software, when you would reach the steering lock at the end of, you know, the, if you've got it set to 900 degrees, 450 degrees one way of travel, it stops. Uh, and the interesting thing, the power supply, this horrible grey thing in the background, there's a fan in that, and when this hits lock, you can hear the fan slow as it's pulling that much current. It would be really interesting to put a, an ammeter on this at some point to see um, uh, what's, it, what's it pulling at, at, uh, at its maximum. Steering right. So that's the shaft, which comes out to this lovely uh, carting eBay Special um, second hand Praga uh, cartwheel. I've got no idea if that's good, bad, or indifferent. It was 30 something pounds. The hub adapter again is a carting part. Uh, lovely little gold thing there. That was 4 99 I think, including postage. Everything on here has pretty much entirely come from eBay. Um, during the pandemic of 2020, um, eBay is your friend. Uh, stuff still keeps coming. So at the moment, I mean, last night I finished putting the bearings in this. I haven't tried it again today. I think that'll be the next thing to do is to plug it back into the computer and get, get that going. And I think from there, we've obviously got to look at the power supply because I'm not using my bench power supply. I'm going to use this eventually once the wires are tidied up fit that in there somewhere all the electronics that are up here will need to be tidied up taken off breadboard sold together properly and fitted around here somewhere um i might put some fans in it i might leave it open i don't know i guess that's the nice thing about building these things as a diy progress as you go try things out you can see uh, as things go. So far, from the 10, 20 minutes use I've had of this in one go, the motor doesn't get particularly hot. Um, the only thing, not to be fair, not even the, the heat sink on the um, motor controller has got that hot. You can still pick it up with your fingers. It can't be that, it's just not that hot. Um, further developments then, I think this, this shaft needs to be a bit shorter, the wheel currently is quite a long way from um, uh, into the seat in my, on my gaming computer. There is a plan, or is there a plan coming together for shifting, because that's the only, that's one thing I haven't got at the moment, is shifting. So there is a design there, using bits of stuff I've got laying around and where have they gone? And I've lost... There it is. And these are tactile switches. Focus. Which you can't quite... Just... The, these will be in the mechanism behind there as the gear shifters. Uh, and some space for some buttons on there as well that will go in a plate behind the steering wheel. 
So obviously if it's going to have buttons and gear shifting paddles and things on the wheel, there's got to be a way of connecting the wheel buttons to the Arduino. And what I think we're going to do is use this lovely curly cord thing, thanks again to the magic of eBay, um, with some, some kind of connector probably in there somewhere for the, the end of the curly cord and then the other end will be connected to the wheel so that if this does go bonkers in one direction it'll give me time to wind the curly cord out and put it back again. Um, as if you can hear that in the background. The chain is not silent um, and I think potentially that may well be the long term plan is whatever the future versions of this look like um, will be to replace this with some kind of uh, belt system on a taper lock that fits onto here. Um, not used taper locks on shafts without keyways, so I don't know whether I'm going to have to put a keyway or something into this to give it some bite or some purchase, I don't know. But again, that's another thing I might do along the line. At the moment, it works for now. Um, the interesting thing about having used this and understanding you know, the, a little bit more about how these things work and having taken the Fanatec apart and looked inside that is I can kind of understand why people would go for direct drive for feel. With any kind of drive system between the, whatever you want to call it, the, the steering shaft and the motor shaft, you're always going to have some play, slack, movement between that cog moving and the steering shaft moving so whereas if you've got a direct drive wheel that connection is complete you know the, it's, you, the motor is turning the wheel so any fine motor adjustment bounces vibrations curbs loss of traction you're going to feel it straight away so i can kind of see why people would um, would go for direct drive the, the prohibitive thing for me at the moment is cost um, now, coming to cost, so far, when I added up what I'd spent on all the stuff I bought from eBay, I think I've spent somewhere in the region of £150, £160. So the wheel was about, this lovely Praga thing, um, was the cheapest thing basically I could find. There you can get car wheels, you can get racing car wheels you get sim racing wheels but 35 ish 30 something delivered that was quite cheap so that was quite a big purchase the bearings were nearly 10 pounds each um the motor sorry the rotary encoder was i think 30 something it was in the last video and then the electronics i think the electronic stuff so was about 55 um, and then there's bearings and this wheel and the hub adapter and some other bits and pieces that i've ordered um, these these rings were what I was using on the shaft to hold it in place. The first version of this, which uh, there may be some, I may say some footage here. Anything at this this level, there's absolutely no. I think I've turned it down too much now. To be fair. Oh, oh. I feel I feel something in there, but it's not. Oh, that squeak is just unbearable. Right. This was how I was holding the shaft in place before I put the bearings on. Originally, this was just through the timber, through this plywood sheeting, and um, that held it in place. And it actually worked all right. I think, to be fair, if it wasn't for the annoying squeak of the aluminium vibrating on the timber, I probably could have lived with it. So the next phase, I think, with this is going to be tidying up the wiring, tidying up this power supply into something I can use in here. I can't use the bench, well, I don't want to use the benchtop power supply because um, I need to use it. I want to keep it in the workshop to do stuff, and the fan in it is stupidly loud. This thing is just deafening. So make this neat and tidy, make the shifter buttons, wire those into the curly cord in there, tidy the electronics, put this in here somewhere. Um, and then make make the flappy paddles um, and I think that will probably be the next video so what I'll probably put on the end of this now is just me 
if I've still got some useful footage, uh, me giggling like a schoolgirl, that the thing actually works. Because um, that was quite exciting, and I got a bit carried away actually using it. Um, and then the battery ran out in the camera, which was clever. So if you want to follow along and see how this build progresses, um, hit subscribe and like, hit the bell, and then the next one that comes along you'll see that as well. Hopefully the next one will be done in the next few weeks and uh, we can get it on the, on the computer and actually racing. And then you can see how bad I am. Awesome. Thanks for watching. a bit well it's working we've got no I, think, I can't actually feel anything at this this level there's absolutely no I think I've turned it down too much now to be fair oh, oh. I, feel, I feel something in there but it's not Oh, that squeak is just unbearable. Right, let's stop that. So, I'm going to turn the EMC utility back up to 50. Okay, so let's leave the leave the in-game settings where they were. And see how that changes things. Whoa, what a bit. Wait, oh, we're not on the... Oh, yeah, we've gone. Right. Still not feeling very much, so I'm going to come out and we're now going to go into this and we're going to go back up to 100. Okay, because there's a lot more strength in this than is, this is letting me feel at the minute. Definitely more. So, so now, now Todd. Thank you.